Hello, and welcome again to another episode of Bourbon with Friends. Um, we are really honored. We have a legend of the you know bourbon whiskey world here with us, as you can see, um, Marianne Eves. Marianne, how are you? And thank you for joining us. I'm doing great. How are you guys? We are. I'm doing great. I'm doing outstanding. Great. <laughs> so no more work. It, it, it was really funny. I actually watched Neat earlier today, just because, and I'm sitting here going, oh, we're talking to her later. This is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's over here going, you're going to sound really dumb and fanboyish. And I was like, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So it's, you it's, must have liked it. Oh yes. 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 We've watched it. I've uh, watched 20 times easy. I've watched it more. I, I mean, something I put on as background noise sometimes just because I see it. <laughs> Like if I'm doing or cooking something, I'll throw it on. Just... I mean, it's it's whiskey, and how can you not sit and talk <laughs> about whiskey all the time? I love it. I love it too. But I I feel like it's kind of weird if I just throw it on as background noise. Like you're watching <laughs> Neat <Yeah>. again. <laughs> weren't yeah, I mean, weren't I you in it? <laughs> I don't throw our podcast on as background noise. Right. <laughs> so um, again, thank you for for joining us. I know you're you're busy and you have a lot going on. I think you're also in the middle of moving and all that stuff which is super super fun um so yeah and you have a you have a new baby as well yeah how's that yeah. going How, how's parenthood considering i'm a new parent too i i, I gotta find out <laughs> andy lane is the best baby i know um she was born on march 13th friday 13th the day the pandemic started oh wow and, <laughs> yeah yeah and she's she's really been um something special to to be grateful for during all the craziness in the world um i think uh, being a new mother would have felt a lot different if life had right. just kind of gone on as normal but having a reason to just stay inside and and be with her and and learn all the the new things was was um something that i'm really grateful for yeah it's it's amazing how just they change your whole life um uh, you'll appreciate this. And these guys did, um, AJ couldn't go with me cause we're all kind of like brothers anyway. JC was able to go. Um, and I actually blended a bottle for my son. Um, and I named it Christian 21. So when he's 21 years old, then I actually get to open it with him. So it was a pretty Aww. cool experience going to bourbon 30 and, and doing that. So, um, I'm really excited about that, but anyway, let's talk about some whiskey. So, um, you've done some stuff with Sweetens Cove more recently uh why don't you give us a little bit of background about you know how you got involved with that and uh we'll sit and sniff this and try it <laughs> well it, it's kind of funny so i can i can do a little segue there from motherhood into sweetens cove so i was pregnant when they reached out to me um okay. i'm not sure if they were fully aware of that <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um they they knew that i was born in tennessee they had this tennessee golf course and and had already created an incredible brand there they they reached out and and as they were talking about this hidden gem the golf course that you right. know, they, they kind of saved from um, just basically being erased from history and, and um, not not being uh, upkept and, and that sort of thing. It felt very similar to me to the, the feeling that I had um, at Castle and Key. Okay. So I, I loved that part of the, the vision that, that they had. They, they really wanted to preserve this really special place for, for golf. And then, you know, they, what they said is that they, they knew they would never really make any money on the golf course. They're still charging, I think like $25 T fees. Is that what it's called? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Heck yeah. Um, And it's in like the, the top nine hole golf courses in the world. Um, Yeah. I'm, I'm not a golfer, but I can definitely appreciate, um, what what they want to do and what they have been doing so the guys that reached out to me they they had just gotten my name from the production facility where they had their barrel just called tennessee distilling down there in in columbia um not a a broadly known facility but they they make and blend and and um bottle a lot of product um so I had almost worked with another client of theirs and it didn't work out. So they, they, they recommended me to um, Sweetens Cove. So I, I don't know, you know, they probably looked me up after this um, Tennessee distilling recommended me, but before that, I, I don't think they really knew 
who I was, they, they were just like, great, we heard you're from Tennessee and we heard you blend whiskey. <laughs> We'd like to know more. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so they, you're from whiskey, you know, you're from Tennessee, you know, whiskey, can you come do this for us? And you're just like, all right, okay. I <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he told me who was on the team and, and all of that stuff. And then I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, and, and we have a hundred barrels of 13 year old bourbon. I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's been a little while since I've had the chance to taste 13 year old bourbon and, and to get a chance to really, you know, get in there and, and play with the profile and that sort of thing. I was a little bit nervous about it just being like oak and right. nothing else. Um, but it was surprising how complex and varied the the flavors were in this lot of 100 barrels so basically i i said sure i'll i'll help you out we'll we'll start with a contract for this one product and um i'm gonna need this amount of time and um the first week i basically spent down there at the distillery um all day long tasting samples and and making notes such a horrible and then, job. I know, right? <laughs> well, it was funny because I was just in the laboratory all day long and, and I had, had intended to make a little field trip out to the golf course. Okay. Um, but my, my week got kind of messed up because the, uh, they were doing plumbing in the office. So the, they were working with like PVC pipe and they had all these like heavy duty, duty adhesives. And I was like, Great. I no longer can smell anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it was too much. So I, I had to leave that day and, and come back the next day. So that kind of um, ruined my chance to, to go see Sweetens Cove. And then, of course, um, I was waiting for Andy to come along. I actually blended the, the product. Um, I mean, they reached out to me when I was pregnant. I was still pregnant when when I blended the product for them. So I was I was tasting and spitting everything but i do think my my palate was a little bit different um which you know maybe even more picky about the right. the flavors in the mouthfeel so it's a, a a very unique expression for me being the first and um only one out there in the world <laughs> that was blended by me while i had the the superhuman <laughs> pregnant nose <laughs> People are probably like, it, was it was blended with love right yes yes what, and 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 you said you you uh you blended a bottle for for your baby um mm -hmm. i asked them to send me um you know a, a bottle of each one of the five batches so that i could hold it back for andy when she turns 21 oh, that's so awesome. be like, you helped me make this <laughs> you don't remember <laughs> <laughs> you had a big part you just don't know <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> You're that's that's great you, you know i actually wonder sometimes and this is i i mean i do it you did it and then how disappointed would we both be to like that tastes like shit you have this moment and then you're just like oh how did you how did i make you <laughs> and then she spits it out yeah <laughs> or you're like well yes I or she's like where's the some... coke <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i could just see that this the twitching would just start happening you're just like the what would you say <laughs> this is really i'm glad you made this mom do you have any coke i can put with this <laughs> know, <right? laughs> you're like wow this is a shame that you're never allowed over anymore <laughs> It is very good, though. Um, I'm glad you like it. We, we, it's, it is. You, you're right. There is a lot of different complexity. Like it, it has a, to me at least, it has a. a you, you get a lot of corn on the nose, but you get tons of like. I get heavy caramel flavor with it, which, and I get the corn and stuff. But that's mm -hmm. what I'm getting a lot with it, mm -hmm. which is really weird because the nose and the and the taste is. Do you else get coconut? Different. I don't like Different coconut, <laughs> so probably not. I get car like a car like a charred caramel, almost vanilla-y a little bit. Yeah. Cherry. I d now that you say that, I get that. Like a candy. Sorry, we're trying. It's the first time we've had it. Usually we've yeah, had yeah. the whiskey beforehand, but like, been able to, like, but the sample was so yeah. small for us. We didn't want to drink it beforehand. So it was like, and I looked at like every I looked for everywhere to find it around here, and I there was nowhere. I don't, yeah. They have a limited release. I don't think it's in Lexington area yeah. yet. So. Mm -mm. No, they're, they're just in Tennessee and Georgia. Yeah. Stupid, uh, stupid Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is, this is very, very good. Like I would, I would drink 
a lot of this. That's an easy drinker. Oh, yeah. Like, there's no burn on it at all. No, that was one of the interesting things about it, too, is is it's bottled at cask strength, um, but the cask strength is is pretty low. You know, that one is, what, 103 ish yeah. the final bottling proof mm -hmm. yep and, and it went in at 115 so all of these barrels lost proof which i thought was was kind of interesting because i'm not used to that coming from kentucky yeah so is that just the weather's different or just that much different mm -hmm. is that why that would happen yeah I, I i have to assume it's the the warehousing conditions i don't think they're doing anything super special with the barreling. I, I really don't know much about the cooperage or, or any of that, but. <laughs> it's like, it's like I wanna, I'm, I've got like one sip left. I'm just like a little at, so, so I was just staring at. So are they going to do more or is that, that mm -hmm. all that they're going to do? Yeah, it, the, the plan is to keep the brand going. And I had a, an interesting idea for them for the, the second round of, of a new release. And um, it's been, an interesting process because it was not a product that I had ever seen done before. Okay. And we're starting to think we, we may understand why <laughs> it's not been done before. It's a, it's a little bit complicated, but, but uh, I haven't given up on it yet. Well, that sounds like I'll I'll definitely definitely be, be seeing that. Yeah. If I can find a bottle of this, I will definitely be, be getting one. Cause that was We're well, all on the edge of our seat, like in that process. Here. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're going to go play some golf. This I mean, heck yeah. yeah. I'm going, I'm definitely. Well, we have a reason to go to Tennessee now. <laughs> yeah. You spent a lot of time in Kentucky. I know you might be from Tennessee, but you understand that whole, Oh, Tennessee, we're going there. Okay. <laughs> it's so, so interesting. My, my, kind of viewpoint on on what a long drive is now has completely changed since being on the road with the circus you know it eight hours seems like a walk in the park so oh, four yeah. hours is like ah oh, that's nothing it's like going to kroger <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wish well you, yeah you you also don't know what a road trip is until you have a baby with you and then you're like oh my god what the hell this used to this trip was so short before now it's like Double the time. It took seven hours to get to Atlanta. I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? This is, I can get to Orlando in one day. It took me three. Like, what's happening yep. over here? This, yep. is, this ba is crazy. Babies in car overnight is not a good thing. So, so you, you know, you had an interesting journey. Um, take us back even before that, right? So we know kind of like, you know, through Louisville, Brown Foreman, how this all started. But whiskey has to – I feel like at least whiskey starts somewhere – else right it's not there's a there's, reason there's a, re there's so, a reason people got into it so so how did you one. why whiskey right why ultimately did you go down this path i think my story is definitely unique as a kentuckian because i i wasn't really raised in the bourbon culture i think a, a lot of people expect you know me me to have one of those stories right. like oh mama put bourbon in my bottle when i was a baby <laughs> <laughs> it's and just you know she, she's from kentucky <laughs> yeah, my my mom um, didn't really drink much. Occasionally, she would have a rum and coke when we were out at, at a restaurant. Right. Um, I never saw my dad drink, although I'm, I'm sure that he did. I think he was more of a scotch drinker when I was growing up. Um, you know, I, I remember the same bottle of Jim Beam sitting on the very small bar that my mom had through my entire childhood. Just, you know, the dust on the shoulder was getting taller and taller. Um, your name in every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I went to chemical engineering school and I had done auto shop in, in high school and I took a little bit of okay. time off from high school between uh, college because I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. But when it finally got to the point, I, I had to, you know, figure out um, what I, what I want, where, what direction I wanted to go. Um, my dad suggested I, I try chemical engineering and uh, University of Louisville was, you know, right, right around the corner. Right. So uh, I was thinking like biodiesel, um, fuel additives, renewable right. energy, yep. all those sorts of things. Cause it was, you know, right in line with, with what I already enjoyed doing, which was the, the mechanical stuff, um, making the, the world a little bit, you know, sa saving the world yep. a little bit. <laughs> yep. gotcha. So that, that was, you know, really my intention going into chemical engineering was to do renewable energy or something like that. And I had the opportunity to interview with Brown Foreman 
and I really didn't know what they did. I, right. you know, I, I guess I, I knew the name. My, my mom knew who Brown Foreman was. So she, she, she said, if nothing else, Marianne, it'll be great on your resume. So I was like, well, well there's <laughs> yeah, that. There <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can do what I really want to do. <laughs> um, I knew it. Very parental thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> she might yep. have more than a rum and coke every now and then. Or, you know, <laughs> if they were and like, right on the resume. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so I, interviewed at all these different places and found myself, you know, selecting the the internship at, at Brown Foreman and started working there. And then, you know, it was just such a fun industry. Like everybody right. was so jealous that I got the internship and I was like, hmm, there must be something to this. Yep. Um, I was already 21 because I took that time off after high school, which is I think kind of rare for a first year intern yep. actually to be drinking age at Brown Foreman. So that, <laughs> that kind of set me apart. That helped. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just really fun and, and as nerdy as I needed it to be to, to keep my interest. <laughs> a lot of science behind bourbon. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A lot, you know, a lot of science that, that people don't even really realize it's about cooking grains yeah, and, and throwing it into a fermenter, adding some yeast and, and distilling it. But every single one of those processes has so many opportunities to alter. Right small things to change flavors in a significant way. It, the, the thing that I really get a kick out about you, especially is, so I'm, I'm like a closet nerd about things like, well, a lot. And I, and it's just, you know, through your background, some of your other interviews, you know, watching you on neat, your, your knowledge and, and you can just see that love of history behind, you know, whiskey and where it came from and how the process comes it makes you just really get excited about it because at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's things not everyone understands. You know, when we, ha we have these conversations about how like George Washington actually made whiskey and you're just like, Oh, America's, you know, everything. I, America AF guys, this is great. <laughs> mm -hmm. But like that whole aspect of it. And, but I think I hear people talk about it when you talk about it though, it there's passion and love behind it. And I think that's what sets, you know, people like you apart in the industry from some others that, they do it and it's kind of like the science of what it is and you love it and like <laughs> you just hear it and it just oozes out of you and it's really awesome to experience and the nerd in me gets really excited when I hear stuff like that so <laughs> well thanks you didn't have the stories behind it in that time, timeline like a lot of us did you know seeing it around us all the time but you know you found an angle you liked on it which you know a lot of people don't look at and made it your own <laughs> Yeah, I, I never really cared much for history while I was in school. And then I started working for Brown Foreman and started learning, relearning the, right. the history of, of um, the America and Kentucky through the lens of bourbon. And I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much stuff I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> JC is kind of like the little nerd of, uh, uh, like that knew everything before I did because I'm new to this. So I'm, I'm, I'm like you in the instance that I didn't have that same upbringing. Like I'm from, I'm from South Florida. These guys are, are from Kentucky. These are the ones their mothers probably not only put the, in their bottles, but they just said, drink it and shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, don't I was younger. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> JC's dad owned liquor stores. Um, I heard it helps with TV. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it rub some on the gums. <sighs> have either one of you tried that? Don't have to answer that teething. question. Oof. <laughs> Boy, um, it, and so, you know, that whole, I appreciate where you're coming from. And obviously you, you're miles ahead of where I will ever, ever hope to be, but, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's those, it's okay. Shut up. Nobody, <laughs> nobody asked you to be an asshole. Um, it's those little things that, that I appreciate. And I think that really what makes w kind of the reception to, you know, our show and things like that, that's been really interesting is you're getting people that are all across that spectrum that don't necessarily have that background. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons why we also want to have you on is because people also think this is a very male centric dominated industry. And, you know, Kate's over here and she's just, she will, she will go she toe will, to toe with anybody with anybody, not bourbon, bourbon knowledge, anybody, <laughs> anybody. I, she, if, if we were at a bar and we were just like, let's go on, like if, just to pallets, right. I'll put Kate up against any man in that bar. Cause you know, she, she would probably whoop me. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't even care to say. So it's really awesome to see how you're like really trailblazing also is that from, you know, from, 
for women and stuff to make let them you know obviously this is not this is for everyone it shouldn't just be for 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 men you know so that's really cool of you and we're really on board with that and really want to keep you know pushing that and stuff like that thank you i appreciate that yeah you're one of the first names like as soon as like people heard we were starting this podcast like all my you know female friends that drink bourbon everyone was like are you gonna have marianne on i was like well Let's we'll see if we get to that point. Like, and she'll even answer. We can get to that email, level. We had like, three downloads at the time, guys. <laughs> like, Calm down. Good night. Like, <laughs> first person, they were just like, "Is she going to be there?" I'm like, well, "So here's the funny. We'll see if she so we'll tell her this because I haven't told her this in any of our conversations either. So when we started, we wrote down like our top two people that we want to have on this podcast, and I am not ashamed to say, but a little jealous that JC gets to check one off the list because you were on his list. You're yep, actually on you were on the list that yeah. I had to have as a so guest. So we were here. say if you could pick any dream person that is affiliated with whiskey and have them on the show, who would it be? And he was like the first person that was out of his mouth. So he, this is. Well, thanks, guys. For him, but yeah, you're yes. the you you're like the first unicorn we get to like check <laughs> off. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so oh. oh, go ahead. No, you got a question. You no, go. No, yeah. no, no. You're just you're just happy to be here. I'm starstruck right? a little bit. I can't help it. Hey, this is the quietest <laughs> he's been on any podcast. Like he's usually talking I, I don't want to say anything because I know I don't know anything compared. I don't want to mess up <laughs> it's, it's not in there. Okay. <laughs> I just <laughs> I wanna feel put put in your place. All of a sudden, like, no, that's wrong. Yes. So here's a here's an interesting question. And and I and so what is just your favorite sipping whiskey, right? Obviously we all have one and ours are all different. You know, so like what's your what's your go to, you know, that you're just sitting around the fire and, and gonna sip on? It's interesting. It's 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 changed a lot. Okay. Um I would have said, you know, back at, at Brown Foreman and indefinitely bled into my castle and key days, um Old Forester or or Woodford double oaked for my top two always. <laughs> that's not a pause <laughs> right there. Um, but, but since, um, since then, it, it's kind of changed a little bit. I, I love Russell's. That's one of my favorites. Um, I also really enjoy, um, shoot, uh, Garrison Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Give me some, some Texas whiskey. I, I, yeah. I really like it. You know, I, I think a lot of people give them kind of a hard time because the flavor profile is so different, but yep. I, I kind of like that about it. So our so this all started. Yeah, that was gonna say on a night where we drank each Taylor Barrel Proof on his birthday yeah. and a bottle also of the Garrison Brothers Balmaria. <laughs> there you go. Because we were originally gonna get the Masters Keep, um, and the distillery was closed that yeah, day. It we was. found out the day they were gonna mm. drive up to Lawrenceburg and get it. No, that, I drove there. I made, oh, I made it to Lawrenceburg. The gates were locked. So <laughs> the gates were locked. They were closed. So they went and spent the same amount of money on a bottle we've never had. And it was Garrison Brothers Balmaria. And it was I mean, pretty daggone good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's been an amazing bottle. We we immediately went out and bought another one like right after. <laughs> like, all right. And we, <laughs> that night, let's go get another one. Yeah. Well, we also drank the entire bottle of the H. Taylor Barrel Proof. So that was a, a fun. It was night. a long, good birthday. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very, a very long. And we started night. this during that. So, so how did you find them? Like, that's a an interesting thing because we, I stumbled on it. I was like, that bottle looks cool. Tell me about that. Um, how did you found, find them? And and is, which one of theirs is your favorite? Well, it's interesting. I I um I tried Garrison Brothers for the first time probably um, uh, six years ago or something like that. I feel like. Um, I really appreciated the the profile of it, but then again, it wasn't Kentucky, so I wasn't supposed right. to like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then I, you know, I, I started getting out of Kentucky a little bit more in the year before I decided to to move on from Castle and Key, right. and actually was visiting Kevin in Austin and and just sent uh, Donna's a, a message through Instagram. And I was like, hey, I don't know if, if you guys are, are open today or if I could come by and just like say hi. And he was like, oh, yeah, come on out. <laughs> so with like, I don't know, 45 minutes of notice, he, he walked yep. me around. That, that's the, the distiller there. He walked me around and introduced me to the, the crew and took me to the barrel house. And we did a tasting and he gave me a bottle. And I don't know 
uh, what it was, but it must have been something kind of special um, because I, I cracked it open. I was like, oh yeah, I do really like Garrison Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried gotten to try their honeydew yet? No, I haven't. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah well, that was good. We drank the whole bottle when we were in Austin. We found one, and then we were stupid and didn't get another one. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we we're on to them as well. Like that's kind of a cool little thing. We wanted to actually go down there. Um, and then with coat, cause we went, what, mm -hmm. two months, three months ago, three months ago, three months yeah. ago, August and, and they went, and I, I don't remember if it was right after the, the gov, the governor made those changes where alcohol and things like that. And so they weren't open. Cause we also went down to the whiskey Academy and they were open either. So, mm -hmm. um, or else we were going to try and do a podcast down there. Cause that, and that would have been a really cool yeah. experience for us, but yeah, it's definitely Texas whiskey is, is interesting compared to Kentucky whiskey. And I know everyone's like, don't like that. You're from Kentucky. Stop yeah. it. It's still good. <laughs> Labor profiles, but it's still good. I like yeah. it. If it's not Kentucky, it's not bourbon, it's not a true statement. But it sounds blasphemous if, you know, being born and raised in Kentucky my entire life to some people. <laughs> so on the West Coast in Oregon, have you found any really good West Coast uh, whiskeys or bourbons out there that you would recommend? Oh yeah, a bunch. Um, Oregon Spears Distillers, I think, is making okay. an incredible product. Um, Woodenville, uh, up in Washington, is making. Yes, they're making these, really, really these, good stuff. These are both bottles I've thought about buying, so I was waiting to see if you actually said that. Yeah. Yes. He's going. To, he's like, I need to take notes. And producer Kate goes, "It's recorded." <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here to look pretty. <laughs> He's such a fan of yours. This is yeah. like really funny. Like, and he's gonna turn blood red, but he's like one of yeah, your I'm biggest red. fans. I'm turning red right now. I, know. <laughs> and, and, like, I don't even so quiet right now. This is great. I'm not even a fan of gin, but I, I just started drinking the gin one day out at a, a bar right down the street from us, and that was really good. So hey, I was hey, like, hey. I've got to try other stuff. The flavor profile of the gin was great. Yeah, hey, it, well. it was really interesting making that gin because. You know, I, I worked for Brown Foreman. Right. Um, they didn't have a gin while I was working there. But toward the end of, of my time there, um, I noticed that they started becoming interested in it just because of what was happening in, in the industry. So they were looking at, you know, different botanical recipes and that sort of thing. I don't think, I don't think, I still don't think they have a gin. But um, so I, I had a little bit of familiarity with some of those recipes, but it was fun because I, I knew that I wanted to make a gin that, that would really appeal to a bourbon drinker's palate. I mean, I'm a bourbon master distiller, so that's kind of, you know, my, my specialty. So using the um, whiskey mash bills as the base for the, the neutral spirit that would be made into the gin, um, using botanicals that were grown in Kentucky, cool. um, making it a more balanced profile as opposed to like overtly citrusy, which I think a lot of new gin producers kind of go that way yep. because they yeah. want to make it so that it's not as Jenny, <laughs> or like, what do people like? Oh, they like fruit, so we'll just make it taste like fruit. But I, I really wanted it to have a a very balanced um and and not maybe not unfamiliar profile for a um a whiskey drinker. Have you had a Kate? Yeah, there's a bottle somewhere. Oh, it's there's some here. Yeah, yeah there's. Some oh, I guess I'm trying some gin. I don't. I think I've had gin <laughs> once in my life, so I guess I'm trying gin now. I, I think it's on the kitchen shelf. Isn't it? Mm, I think yeah. th this house is literally just filled with alcohol, mostly bourbon. <laughs> like, you can't even see like the wall over here. That's really yeah. just. I mean, and it's like six deep. So um, it, it's been a running joke. They're like, no, that's a kitchen bourbon. Like, go in there. And get that. <laughs> that's not. That's not back here. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, have y'all yeah. ever heard of JB's Whiskey House in Nashville? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, yeah the Whiskey yeah. House in Nashville. Yeah. yeah, that's the one you were talking. Yeah, about. that's the, yeah. Going down there. Yeah, I want to go down there. That, Something that's to his aspire goal for to. That, that's my <laughs> yeah. goal for here. It's like literally floor to ceiling. They they have like bench seats everywhere. You walk in the kitchen, you walk. It's just everywhere. It's just wall to ceiling it is bourbon everywhere. whiskey. <laughs> they open some pretty pretty old bottles every now and then on their. I mean, Paul's kind of blocking it out, but you can kind of see the closet behind. Is yeah. Just, like, all the way down. Had a feeling. I don't, I don't have, we don't have a problem. <laughs> we have a passion. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> so, so is, this was like a curiosity when we were looking, because when you said like Woodenville and, and the, uh, the other Oregon company, 
uh, are, is their process completely different than from what Kentucky's doing as far as the aging process and stuff? Um, because I think that's been our hesitancy. Like, we, and, and we're also we're also one of those weird people that drink bourbon and we won't spend money on stuff if we don't necessarily know about it or know it might be good. Because we'll the last every now, and then. every now and then, I'd rather try it at a whiskey bar first. And yeah, then, so yeah, that's the bottle. But so what? 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 What's the differences between that? Because I've never been out that far, been out west that far. So that might be a good question to ask you. Since you're here yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning more and more about it. it. It seems like, you know, the the processes that they use generally are not totally different. I mean, it, it, right. it's interesting because these folks in particular, you know, they, they didn't have like a background from, from bourbon um, right. the the distiller at um oregon spirits was from tennessee but but she wasn't producing whiskey in tennessee when she moved out to oregon she started working for a, a brewery or she wanted to work for a brewery and then wound up um starting to work in this distillery and, and worked her way up so they they do things a little bit differently um but it's it's not like completely wild and off the wall. They're embracing, you know, local grains. Both of these distilleries are, are embracing gotcha. local grains. And um, they, they do have differences in, in the way that they age. So at Woodenville, they're, they're sourcing local oak. Um, okay. But at, at uh, Oregon Spirit, they, they made the intentional decision to source barrels that come from Kentucky. Okay. Because okay. they feel like, you know, that, that definitely has an impact on the, the profile, which absolutely it does. Yeah, and you don't have the extreme weathers. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The, the weather's not as like extreme there, right? It doesn't go like really, really cold and really, really hot. It's kind of a mild summers. It definitely gets really, really cold, but I, I don't know that it gets quite as, as, as hot. So, right, the, the extremes aren't quite as extreme. The age process would almost be almost like scotch a little bit more. Because yeah. the northwest yeah. is yeah. probably is a little bit more mild temperature. So that's gonna. It, so that would have a little, a whole new flavor profile. Okay. I almost went. All right, I'm blend. going to buy a bottle. It's fine. She talked me into it. <laughs> I almost I wonder exactly. If you I want to. I want to buy her, 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 um, her new thing she's doing just for the new that black lane carrying that she has because she's sent that. <laughs> <out of it. laughs> I, I love that pretty? thing. Yeah, yeah that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one doesn't have my logo on it yet, but there will be a little logo. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about Eve's blind? Cause I know I've looked at it and I'm probably going to get it because I I'm also a fan and it's can't, and it's gotta be awesome. So, and I want those glasses. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so it's really cool what you're doing. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So the, the whole reason why I started thinking about this idea of a um, like sample box essentially mm -hmm. was because I, I had already like emotionally got very attached to the idea of having a mobile laboratory. And I was like, but I don't have any, I, don't, I mean, I don't have enough money to do that right now. Right. <laughs> so what, what can I do to make some money? And, and so I, um, I had some thoughts. I, I pitched a couple of folks for sponsorships, but they were like, Oh, that's, that's big. Um, maybe not right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I thought, well, well, maybe this is something that I can do myself. So I, I put a little thing out on Instagram and, and basically just said, um, what tuition would you pay to expand your palate? Like basically taste whatever I decide right. to, to make on the road for the first year that the mobile laboratory is, is going around. And my, my first thought was like, I could make whatever I wanted to, like, it doesn't right. even have to be a real product. Like, you know, it, it could be a mixture of, of mezcal and, and absinthe. Like I can just put whatever I want to in a bottle and, 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 um, you know, with, of course, my, le my standard of quality, I'm not going to just throw right. no, <laughs> anything in there and, we, and, we and make people saying. drink it. Yeah. But then I started thinking, you know, I'm not the mezcal absinthe lady like people know me because of neat and because of the bourbon industry yep. so i i think that there's a, a maybe more interesting opportunity for me to to continue to refine my palate and do interesting things in in the bourbon world and um so i, I created this this concept for an educational more educational program um with the the 
angle of being, you know, these are unique blends that I made that nobody else has, has tasted before. Um, they're single source blends. Each one okay. is a different source. Um, so you're, you're tasting whiskey from eight different places um, along the oh, way. Wow. Uh huh. Um, I'm not going to disclose the the locations um, or the much detail about the um, the producer or anything like sure, that no, because fine. I because I want it to be um, totally like leave your preconceived notions at the door. Um, you know, I, I think there's a really cool opportunity, especially with the black Glencairn glasses, to really teach people how mm -hmm. to pay attention to their palate more so than than paying attention to a label or um, you know the the color or or, or you know the visual right. of it. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah, because I I think a lot of people rely a lot on the story behind a product to appreciate it, um, which we should actually be picking up things that, that we like to drink versus just like, oh man, um, there's the, this product that was made by this, this old guy 3000 years ago and they, they <laughs> dug up a bottle and <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's gotta um, be good, right? <laughs> right. It's, this it's looks a, dark as hell. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that's what, I think that's so. guilty. See, yeah. 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 See, I, that, I thought the Glen Cairns is, looked really cool but i didn't even think about because i'm guilty of doing the i mean you see you'll see me do it to, i've done it tonight like pouring it like this and kind of seeing how big it is dripping down little things like that and i was like i couldn't do any of that with that like, it takes, like, that's right and you and you and you don't actually really know how much you've poured yourself either so that could be a good or a bad thing <laughs> i like that <laughs> Another bonus of it. <laughs> JC's just like, well, guess I know what we're buying as soon as this podcast is over. This is happening right now. So no, like uh, that was something that that I thought was really awesome. And 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 I think you just recently launched it too, right? It's not been out. It's not mm -hmm. been very long. Yeah, less than a month. Um, and I've you know kind of been slow to to tell people about it. So I put that thing out on Instagram, and I wanted those folks to be the first people to hear about it. So I sent out a, a couple rounds of emails and, and then reached out to some very select media. And um, I'm, I'm hoping to be on like Christmas um, gift uh, list recommendations and, and that sort of thing. It's, I'm not trying to, to make it huge. I, I, I want it to be intimate and, and exclusive for the, the folks that sign on. It's, it's my first time doing something like this. There could be some hiccups. So I, I need people to, to really, you know, be excited and, and um, willing to, to go on this journey with me. Yeah, no, that's 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 really exciting. Though. It's on my wish list, just so you all. Know. Well, I mean, you can kind of tell just in your face whenever you started getting to talk about it. You're, you're like, I don't have any room. right now. <laughs> don't even talk about it. Just like Paul, you want to go half or something? Yeah, something I'm like going this? We're going to do it all together. <laughs> but I mean, you could tell as soon as we started talking about it, your face lit up. You're like, I can do whatever I want. Like this is gonna be fun just to play around. Exactly. You know, I mean, because I mean, with bourbon, you're kind of your hands are tied to a certain restriction. But I mean, that's what people know you from. But you can still play around a little outside the rules and a little outside the box. So you know, so so <laughs> we'll wrap this up pretty quick. Quick, but what's what's next for you? Like where you know where you're 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 changing a lot of the bourbon game. Obviously, you're a trailblazer. Um, we're definitely going to stay. Uh, you know, follow your career and 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 just about anything you put out there, we're probably going to try because nothing you've done sucks so far. So <laughs> the only thing bad part about you is that you went to U of L. So other than that, oh. but... <laughs> I hear it. I hear you. I hear you. Every time, you know, when I, when I moved down to Lexington to start working at Castle and Key, every time I did a presentation, I would basically like cover my face when I said I, I went to U of L. It's like, please don't hold it against me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. As long as you make good whiskey, we can talk about, you know, we'll drink the good whiskey while we talk shit about each other's sports teams. And so I can deal with that. So, so, what, so give us a little bit about, you know, what's next for you, yeah. where you see going and everything. And, uh, you know, we'll wrap it up. So in the near term, it, it's going to sound like a ridiculous amount of, of stuff. Um, and I probably said yes to um, a couple too many projects here, but I just got a lot of really exciting opportunities and I have been picky about the partners that I choose, but I've got, you know, more, more coming with Sweetens Cove. I'm really excited about the, the next year's release and, and beyond with them. Um, Eve's Blind is, is um, you know, 
top of my mind for, for next year and, and how all of that rolls out, having two levels of this kit and then getting together all of the, the nerdy information. I had this lady, a um, professor from Yale got in touch with me and she was like, so what is it that you're trying to do? Like, this seems like <laughs> a lot. And she's like, what we do is we strive for the impossible and then come up with the, the really, really yep. great. So I was like, I think I can handle really, really great. Um, so there's, there's those two things. And then I've got actually two different, um, bourbon brands that I'm working on. And I think both of them will actually launch in 2022. Um, there's a brandy and vermouth that I'm working on, um, with this lady, uh, in Oakville, California, it's called okay. Hoops Vineyard. So basically taking some of those smoke tainted grapes and making a smoky brandy, like kind of reimagining yes. brandy and, and creating a new category, like the mezcal of brandy or All the right. scotch okay. of the brandy world. <laughs> So I'm super excited about that, you know, to, uh, another way to blaze a trail in a, in a, a different spirits category. Um, I'm also helping a woman build a distillery, a bourbon, dis, not bourbon. <laughs> Somebody's going to write me like a death threat letter for saying that it's not a bourbon distillery. It's a, a <laughs> yeah. whiskey distillery in uh, China. So, oh, wow. yeah. So from what I understand, it's the, the first premium whiskey distillery in mainland China. She's been working on getting the government and all the regulations right. and, yep. and all that sort of stuff together for the past six years. Um, but they, they are building a single malt distillery, but they also want to okay. do an American bourbon style product. Um, so I get to decide what that recipe is and what the flavor profile is for, you know, the first, maybe ever first <laughs> um, Chinese whiskeys. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, maybe it'll take off like Japanese whiskey has. We'll, we'll just see. <laughs> That'd be interesting, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, just coming on board with a, a rum project that'll be out of Florida. So I'm excited about that too. Starting off with some sourced rum, which I've never done before. So if anybody listening to this knows good good places to source rum, I'd be super interested <laughs> to know. Captain <laughs> Jack gonna, Sparrow, please, right? <laughs> please get a hold of Marianne Eves. <laughs> so I'm going to be tasting a, a lot of different rums. So I'm stoked about that. So you, the, this is like really cool because she's got a chance to do something. I think what no master distiller has done on the bourbon side, you could like create, just have badass stuff and everything. And 20 <laughs> years from now, we're just going to be like, I mean, it's fine. It's the Mary Ann made, so it's no problem. Yeah. Like, she, you don't like gin. It's fine. She made it. I would love like that. It. I would love that. That's, that's really awesome. Cause I don't think too many people, I'm grabbing your glass just cause I don't think there's too many people that are out there that I, put their hands in all those yeah, kind of yeah. different spirits so kind of, bravo you they're probably scared well about it like I mean, yeah yeah that's it just speaks to your your talent and ability and we're definitely gonna try all of it so hey thank you at least show yeah. three people that'll drink it so. <laughs> <laughs> yes um, <laughs> you guys ready to buy a bunch of cases <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, we get an email and be like, "Hey, did you podcast. go for that?" Because if uh, so, we're in. There, so the numbers go up. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Marianne, thank you so much. You've 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 made three big bourbon fans and three big Marianne fans very happy yeah. that you you came up for. Sorry, producer Kate's over here looking at me sideways. She's like, "I'm gonna throw this computer yeah. at you." <laughs> Uh, this, we keep talking, set the other mic up over there. You, it's like Howard Stern, you know, and just yell at us. Tell us when we're wrong, and because she does it anyway. So she's, not, she's <laughs> nodding. <laughs> she's, I she, think no. I think she does need a microphone. Yeah. I agree, but we, we she won't do it though. We, I was like, set up the microphone. We'll do this, and just sit over there in your big throne and and talk. It is a throne. She literally is. A <laughs> she's throne. got the most. <laughs> you know what? she could do instead if she, if she didn't want to have uh, like a microphone and be in the interview just give her one of those keyboards that makes sound effects so that she can make like <laughs> yeah, she actually has wah, wah and crickets and <laughs> well, we just got new sound equipment and on the on the mixer board now we can actually plug sounds in we just haven't done it yet and she's <laughs> in her mind when we're not listening she's just like just wait we're gonna put like a fart noise in there when you're <laughs> yep. not <right."> so, uh <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. This has been a phenomenal experience. JC's just. You want to say anything, JC? I know. Thank you. <laughs> JC's in <laughs> heaven over here. So um, I hope everyone enjoys this. Um, you can follow her on 
uh, Instagram, Facebook. You have a Facebook page, I also believe. We'll probably share your uh, Eve's um, blind as well so everyone can see that that follows us. And we're in, in our Chug group, which probably that'll be – everyone will love that anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. um, guys, appreciate it. Thank you so much. And remember, a bourbon with friends can change the world. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.